and welcome back here to Let's Play Dwarf Fortress the Tutorial Fort. Uh, I think we're called like Revered Ring or Watched Walls, Watchful Walls? Something with walls and rings. But we have a goal in mind for this session, which is that we would like to make our fort more defensible. There's a couple of ways we're going to do that, and we would also like to fill out our military, but to do that we're going to need the weapons to arm them with. Now the ore we've been given here is this handy dandy stuff called Galena. It is okay for making weapons. You can get all that is basically useless. You can get things like zinc, you can get um, cobaltite, just some real real naff material that you can't actually have any real- oh! Well I guess we're gonna cover artifacts this time as well. So one of our people was just taken by a mood. There are various kinds, there's like um, fey moods, possessed by ancestors, all kinds of good stuff. Now, okay, so he's claimed the craft source workshop. As you can see, Dwarf Fortress loves to just throw you around when it does that. But what's just happened is essentially one of our dwarves has been struck by an inspiration. An inspiration that they cannot ignore. They must make this item that has popped into their head. They must, must, must do it, and they must have the perfect materials. Otherwise, bad things happen. Either the dwarf will go insane, they will strip down naked and wander around your fort aimlessly, they might go berserk and try and kill people. And um, Basically, they try and make this artifact that's popping in their head that has either been given to them by some kind of spirit, or maybe they've just, you know, connected with the soul of the stone. They found a thing that they really want to do and they're going to do it. So that guy's off running. And you can see the uh, the guy with the little exclamation mark there, who keeps running around and collecting things. He is going to drag whatever it is that he needs, whatever it is he wants to make this item. He's going to collect it all up in his uh, workshop there. But he's not done. What is he missing? Let's see what... If we hover over him with V here. Peculiarly secretive. So we don't know what it is he's missing. But there's something he wants that he doesn't have. I am going to make a bet here that it's born. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slaughter one of our hens. Also, seeing as a bunch of chicks hatched, I'm going to assign those to the chicken shed. While I remember, some of these did have sim uh, hatch simply because we did not get there. We got another yak calf, thankfully, so our yaks are back to uh, being able to breed. We'll have to sort their pastures out as well. But what I'm hoping is, we'll slaughter the chicken, and he'll go get the bones. He did not. Okay, um, maybe he wants tanned hide. Strange mood. He's a legendary... St he's our stone crafter, too. That's gonna be, um... That's gonna suck if we can't get this guy on side. Maybe he needs cut gems. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna build workshop, jeweler's workshop. Now we don't actually have anyone to do this. But we're gonna make one out of diorite. We're gonna go into... Oh, well we've lost Dwarf Therapist actually. I'm gonna pause the recording for just right, So I've found my way into, um, into the files. Go away you. I don't know why my web page popped up there. But these are all the things we have. So we want to open up Dwarf Therapist. There it is. So I, I've hidden this somehow from the launcher, but I'll fix that later. So if you ever do move your files, all I did was throw everything into the Dwarf Fortress file, but apparently those files needed to be out here. So I should have made a new folder and thrown everything into there. But I can fix that after. We have our thing here. We're going to go down to this massive wave of peasants we just got. We're going to find um, gem cutting and gem setting. We have no one with that skill. So we're just going to grab this person here and this one here to make sure this is done in an expedient fashion. Enable those things. Now someone's off to build the jewel shop and then we're, going to, we're just going to order them to cut some gems. So we're going to add task, cut gem for amber opal and repeat. We're going to add another task, we're going to go down to pink garnets, we're going to press C to cut, R to repeat. And the rest of this we're not going to cut because these are our semi-precious stones and our ores. <coughs> But hopefully, once one of those um, gem cutters has gotten their hands on a gem and cut it, that will be what that guy wants, and he'll come sprinting across and grab it. We can only hope. 
Now we're just gonna. There we are. He's on his way over. Let's call dibs on that. Looks like he's running into the stockpile to get wood as well. And he's begun his construction. So we have provided him with everything he needs. Looks like he gathered two or three different bits of stone. At least one cut gem. And some other things. Which is pretty cool. So we're going to press Z now to go into our stocks. And we're going to check something. We're going to scroll down to bars here. Okay, so we have three silver bars. We have 21 charcoal. So we're actually um, on our way. As far as the smelting goes. We're going to wait until we have maybe five or six silver bars. And then we're going to order our blacksmith to begin the construction of the silver weapons. And then all of these idlers that we've got here, we're going to have a look. Pick a few out and throw them in the military to use those um, wooden shields and silver weapons that we're going to make. But while he's doing his construction, we do have something else we can be getting on with. Because so what we're going to try and do here, we're going to try and outline our walls with our blocks. So we're going to have to have both of our masons begin making blocks again. But we also want to start digging out a moat to go around even that. Now flying enemies won't give half a hoot about um, moats and what have you. But flying enemies in Dwarf Fortress aren't super common. So I think we can safely count those out. This was an awesome fight by the way. Just this, this just our guy just... Uh, <clears throat> Stabbing someone, and like I said, he's not super good with it. Lots of, lots of stabbing though. It's pretty good. I'm gonna go over the uh, different applications for different weapons once we actually um, choose which ones we're making with our silver. But uh, just to give you a brief overview, spears are not killing weapons. They're used to disable enemies, and then other things are used to do the killing itself. But we're gonna start. Oh. A Galena crown, nice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna press Shift L to look at this artifact. Right now it's the only one, so it's zoomed straight to this one. When we have more, we'd get a list here. But we can see this thing has a value of 32,400 dwarf bucks. And if we press V, we can look at the description of the item itself. This is a Galena crown. All crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of oval Galena cabochons and rectangular amber opal cabochons. This item menaces with spikes of Galena, schist, and pecan wood. So, what I'm picturing here is almost like just a band crown, and it's made of this ore that has both lead and silver, so it's this black band with veins of silver running through it, and then the, the actual, like, you know, traditional spiky upward bits of the crown alternate between those three materials and then on the band are various gems which is just, you know, it's just pretty cool. I would try and do some art of that uh, similar to the way Krug Smash does but I am not an artist and I have no digital art supplies so you will just have to live with your imagination. So we're gonna build our moat this far out we're going to build it four wide. We're going to use our channel, the same that we did before. And we're going to build, we're going to dig this out until it's one away from touching the stream. So we're going to use the stream to fill our moat. But obviously a single level down is just not going to cut it. We're going to have to get rid of that one there, otherwise even a diagonal connection I think might allow water through. Now it's going to take a long, long time to dig out the mortar that we want. I think we actually have some trees to maybe cut down there. Those might just be little shrubs. If they are, they will dig them out when they do the channel. If those are actually... Um... What's the word I'm looking for? not shrubs <laughs> yeah if those are actual trees then they won't actually be channeled away but if they're just shrubs or plants they will channel them away not a problem what are our miners doing right now dig and dig well apparently oh yeah we have this massive area down here so i think we um we are going to be a while on that channel but i think we are well enough equipped that we can start and make our weapons. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to 
the Metalsmith's Forge here, we're going to press Shift P for Profile. We're going to go to our work orders, we're going to press Q. We're going to type out Silver, and it's going to bring up everything we could make with Silver. These are our weapon choices. We have the Mace, the Spear, the Short Sword, the Warhammer, and the Battle Axe. So, pros and cons. We'll go over each one uh, in the kind of wheelhouse. So, the Mace and the Warhammer occupy very similar spaces, in that they do blunt damage. Now, blunt damage, especially early on, will break bones... Well, once your dwarves know what they're doing with it, will break bones, even through armor. Its damage translates really, really well through, you know, armor, and it's good against inanimate objects. There are things in the game which are not traditionally alive. They have no organs. So, um, particular monster types, like, a, for instance, a Colossus, which is a giant animated statue, blunt damage is really good against them. Now, spears are also good against armor, but in a different way. Spears will puncture through armor, and then they will hit internal organs inside, or they will damage very small specific parts of an enemy. So a spear to the leg is likely to disable a leg, but spears don't kill super quickly. Now your super killy weapons are the short sword and the battle axe, and these guys are especially killy against things that don't have armor, because they will remove limbs quite often, especially if you have a skilled wielder and a decent weapon. They will just straight up hack off limbs, but the damage doesn't do well against armor. If you try and use a short sword against someone in armor, the slashing damage is basically nullified and made into a much weaker blunt damage. So while Warhammers aren't the the quickest to kill in most situations, they are really good against armor. Short swords and battle axes, real good at removing limbs and hacking people up. Spears, real good against anything that has organs, but mostly in a support role because they will make it much easier for the killy weapons to get in and finish things off. I think I summed that up okay. But what we're going to order, we're going to order three maces. Oh. We're going to go back in here. We are going to order... three spears. Now again... Silver isn't actually the best for making sharp implements out of, so the spears are not going to be the most effective, but I do like having them around. I like having spears. But we're also going to order three silver warhammers. Now, whoever gets the maces and the warhammers, honestly, are getting the better end of that deal, but I just, I like having the spears around because they make for good um, support weapons. But now what we have to do is we have to pick our military dwarves. So what we're going to do, we're going to pause the game a sec. We're going to bring up Dwarf Therapist here. We're going to read. And what we're going to do is assign a custom role to some dwarves to make them easier to find in the game. Now, obviously, I have all these over here. I'm going to ignore these. And I'm going to make a role based off of someone who has no jobs right now. So this guy right here, who are we looking at? We are looking at Iton Alathrex. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to customization, we're going to make a new custom profession from this unit. This will take all of the skills he has assigned. So we click that. The new custom thing that we want, we don't want Woodcrafter, we want this guy to be called, Just we'll just call this military, because the military guys have no roles. There we are. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to pick out nine of these guys, plus where's, uh, where's Rakust? Rakust, customization, military. So there's two. Two of our ten. Each squad of dwarves will be ten strong. So, under Iton we have Kib. Congratulations, Kib. You are now military. And we're up to four. And we go to five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There we are. So we commit all those to military, but obviously we haven't actually assigned them to the military. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go into M for military. Now, when we created the squad, we just selected Rakust, and he just automatically went to the top, and he was assigned militia commander role. So what we're going to do? We're going to go to the ones below, and we're going to look down here for the people who have been assigned the military role. So there's one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. We now have our ten military dwarves, but we're not done, because if you remember when we selected this squad, we gave them the metal uniform. We don't have metal shields. What we're going to do, we're going to press E for equipment, we're going to go to these other guys, and we're going to press enter on each of their shields. I'm going to do that now. And it's just going to remove that metal shield from their uniform. So they're going to stop looking for metal shields. And in a moment, we're going to alter their uniform a little bit more by adding in that they can just use any shield they like. And that should mean that these guys will take the wooden shields that were made earlier. So how do we do that? Well, we hover over one of the guys, we press Shift S, and then we just put Shield. So now there is no restriction on the type of shield. It is just find a shield and use it. We could use it. We could have them looking for any shields or bucklers. We could have them looking for if we left the uniform unaltered. You know, we could have them looking just for metal shields or bucklers again. But we don't have access to that, and we can't make shields out of silver. So those guys should now run along and grab those nine shields. And we'll see them run up in a moment. See them all becoming recruits. That's their sprite there. So if I press V and hover over one of these guys, and I go to I for thing here, we see the pecan wood shields. We see yeah, just really, actually really nice shields. You see how they have these um, symbols on either side of them? You'll learn to figure them out as they go, but that asterisk there means that is a pretty good shield. So does that equal sign? I think the, the one was the one with a one dash, no. But um, there's one, the plus is the worst shield we have there so far. And that's still pretty good. That's still a well-made shield. And as weapons are brought out into the stockpile, these guys will run downstairs and claim them. I don't think any of them have weapons right now. Maybe one or two will have, you know, a battle axe if someone brought a, a, a battle axe with the intent of chopping lumber. Because lumber axes and battle axes are designated as the same thing in Dwarf Fortress. I'm still waiting on the miners to be done. But we'll get to that. Shouldn't really be a problem. And now, seen as good old Rakos here has been around a while... They will be teaching these guys, if we uh, press V, go to general, organize dodging demonstration. Rakost is now going to tell them the brilliant tale. We're going to press B and M again to get rid of their labor and miscellaneous skills. So Rakost isn't actually a great dodger. Rakost is only dabbling at it, but Rakost is better than the others. So they're going to organize a demonstration and, you know, teach them how Rakost bravely murdered the ever-loving daylights out of some random peasant who was formerly a were hyena. But we still have more dwarves that we can use for things. So let's see. Oh, we have four dwarves who don't have a job right now. That's actually an acceptable margin for me right now. The Craftsdorf's workshop, also because someone was possessed and was in here, is now lost its um, its task list. Let's see now, can we build some more beds and doors? I like to have rooms done before I move dwarves into them, but with the sheer amount of dwarves that we currently have living in the barracks. We might move some people in before their rooms are done, and then once they are, we will just redefine the size. Or we will go into planning mode to cap the size of the room. Because the thing is, the way defining a room works is the room will be stopped by any doors it encounters. So if I were to right now assign some of these bedrooms, the dwarves would claim areas outside of the rooms themselves, just in the corridor, as part of their room. It might be that we actually have enough here, though. 
This is going to really take the pressure off of our dormitory upstairs. The joys of having a second mason and your masons getting, uh, you know, faster at their work right here. Don't think... Oh, we can have quite enough. It's always fun. I could have worked this out. I could have counted how many doors I'd put down. I think we are going to have enough and we're going to have some to spare as well. Which is pretty cool. So now, this is why you like to have just a few dwarves on standby. Because they now all have quite a bit of furniture hauling to do. I don't think we have many cabinets. We decided to um, just get the rooms built before a human caravan has arrived. Now these guys are worth trading with. A lot of their armor won't fit us. But they do have half decent weapons. And they might even have just some steel bars or iron bars. Food, alcohol, thread. Basically the things that we struggle to produce. We have plenty of drinks now. And we have a decent amount of plant. And we probably should get a, at least a small stone stockpile going. That's so what we're going to do. From Actually, no, we're going to wait. We, um, we need more miners, I think. What we're going to do is we're going to jump into this uh, thing here. We're going to assign mining to these bottom two guys. Take gem setting and cleaning off the bottom one. Leave him without mining, actually. There we are. He's a mason. Okay, so we can't do that. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the profession tab so we can make sure we're not um, giving this to our military. We have two woodcutters who aren't woodcutting, but they do have other jobs. Weavers who are wood burners. Your stone detailing. Stone detailing isn't a permanent job though, so this stone detailer is also going to be a miner. And we should see in a moment if someone else picks up a pick. If not, we're going to try and buy one from the humans, because they will have brought one. So we're going to hover over this, we're going to press R to request our trader show up here. We're going to press G for goods. We're going to come down until we find our crafts, which is just there. We have one finished crafts bin. That's not an amazing amount. We could honestly probably do with a second crafter to make sure we get lots of money. You see, as the, the weapons are being made here, the dwarves are arguing over who gets them. See, uh, this guy looks like he actually has in his inventory the copper spear. So what is what has Rakust got? Oh, Rakust changed his mind from copper to silver, so maybe the silver spear is better than copper. Being at the top of the list means that Rakust gets first dibs on weapons and armor that he chooses, and then Locum gets to pick whatever Rakust doesn't, so on and so forth, until whatever's left is given to Rith. So if you do have a dwarf you're particularly fond of, you may want to... Um, put them higher up on the list you see them constantly shuffling their equipment there because of what as one person discards a weapon the next person in the line goes "Ooh, a weapon dibs and if we hover over here we can see that our trader is actually ready to trade our finished goods bin is here it's worth a lot more than the last one just because the skill of our crafter has gone up but again it has quivers and ropes in these are things we can't super easily replace right now, so instead we're going to trade a bunch of the items in the bin instead of the entire thing, and let's just come down a bit. We're going to buy one more piece of raw green glass just in case someone needs it for an artifact. And then we're going to start hopping down here. Now you see all of these things like um, bronze toys, we could take those and melt them down in our furnaces. But right now we have our silver melting, so that's that's a okay. There are things of milk, wine, all kinds of things we could be trading for. An iron great axe, we could not use that unfortunately, and it is way too expensive. It's masterwork. Do we press um? We can't. Uh, you have view goods. A great axe is a very large, nearly twice the size of a battle axe. Its size makes it unsuitable for dwarves, but its heft makes it a formidable weapon in the hands of those with the strength and size to wield it. If we look at its description, it's just a superior coral. Wow, it's not even that good. I was expecting that thing to be like encrusted with cool gems and all kinds of stuff. But there are some picks here. Let's see. There's a bronze. Oh, wow, these are expensive. Bronze pick. We could probably afford that one. There we are. I think, yep, we're going to trade for that bronze pick. Just to make sure we have one extra, we're going to ignore all of these shields and all of this armor because we can't afford it. Now, if we were to get 
one or two of these leather bins. We would probably be able to make leather armor for our dwarves, but I don't see too much of a point in that right now. So we're going to skip past all this. We might get, um, when, um, when we have a little bit more to trade, we're probably going to buy some cloth bins so that we can make our clothes. We could get another anvil here. Now, silver is an unsuitable anvil metal, so if we wanted another smith, we would need to buy an anvil from one of the passing traders. We are going to buy a bunch of his food because we are... We did get a massive migrant wave that we weren't entirely prepared for. We definitely didn't... Um, yeah, we weren't prepared for them. A lot more of them arrived than we thought. So we're just going to buy a bunch of food. That'll do. And then we're going to get some thread and yarn because this episode, we also plan on setting up our hospital. And you need thread. Uh, wait, no, we're going to press T to trade. He's happy enough with the trading. Wasn't ecstatic, but it got the job done. But yeah, we need thread for our hospital to stitch up dwarven wounds. Soap is also excessively useful in hospitals, but we just didn't have any of that in there. So we have there the silver mace, and you can see our um, our blacksmith is not fantastic, but these weapons are getting better as they go. This guy's claimed a ring, that's pretty cool. Rith. Yeah, uh, this guy's just come back, so does he have it? He has a silver mace. So, plenty of weapons being handed out. By the time the smith is done... We will have a functional but not fantastic army. Hopefully we come across another metal further down. If not, we will be able to transfer a lot of this silver into sterling silver. And we'll be able to um, make some really, really fine crafts with that. And then we can basically buy whatever, whatever we like. The lead that we get, we are definitely going to be making um, crafts out of. Metal crafts sell for a decent amount. In fact, I would like to, but I don't know that we're going to have enough um, charcoal and trees to reasonably just start um, selling all of that willy-nilly. Because we would run out of charcoal pretty quickly. Okay, so there's all of those as bedrooms now. So obviously, that's not quite enough bedrooms for the amount of dwarves we have, but we are going to do another expansion as soon as we can. It's just that for now, there is a lot of mining to be done. See, so yeah, I don't see anyone else digging. We know we have another picker right now, and we know we have somebody with the job, so I'm sure they'll get around to it as soon as they can. But if we, uh, we look up here, we see that... One of the dwarves now is leading a fighting demonstration and teaching the others what they know about fighting. Which is not much apparently. This guy's a dabbling fighter. So he's just stood at the front doing, you know, like anime anime jump kicks and practicing his uh, wax on, wax offs. But he is transferring his skill to the others. And if we press R, well, we haven't found it yet, but once dwarves. Um, when basically when they feel like it, they will spar with each other, which is just practice combat. They won't injure each other doing that, but they will most definitely uh, ramp up a lot quicker in skill. Actually, our, our new miner is upstairs doing the channel, so I'm actually okay with him being up there. He's going through the um, easier material, so he's better off up here than he is down there anyway. Now we are going to have to remove the ramps from this as well and we're going to want this thing to be like uh, two or three tiles deep. Same as our well so that this will drown invaders who attempt to come at us or at the very least funnel them fairly, fairly well. Because we're going to have walls up against these as well. Now I have seen people make moats out of lava and that's um... Marginally more effective than water. It's gonna anyone's gonna struggle to get oh a baby llama is starving. Thank you, DF hack. So I'm gonna do 
I'm going to hop over onto our pen and pasture above ground here. We're going to hold shift N, and we are going to bring up anything that is not. So I'm going to go for the yak, that donkey fowl, baby llama, donkey fowl. There we are. That's all the stuff that needs to um, graze. Different animals require different um, pens and pastures. As you've seen, the pigs are quite happy to live downstairs and live off of just misery and closeness. But the, the um, other animals need a lot more than that. And I think we just saw one of our guys grab honey out of the one of the hives there. So if we go to our screw press... Did we build a screw press? I thought we had. But I'm not seeing one. Well, we'll build one now, so build, workshop, no, we definitely, we have a screw press, I am being blind. Huh, but I literally can't see it. I imagine, that, oh, there it is, it's next to my farmer's workshop. So yep, we are going to press honey from honeycomb, we're going to put that on repeat. And now we will be able to make some mead along with whatever we've been making from the wildflowers that we've gotten upstairs. Now we have actually more idlers still. We have four or five of them pretty much constantly. You can see our wood supply has dwindled considerably. So what we're going to do is try and put those guys to work by chopping down some more trees if we can locate any. So we're going to go up a level down here. Yep, there are some trees over here, so we're just going to um, order them all chopped down. So D and T. There we are, and we're going to run our way across. And then we're going to press P as well, because we're going to gather the plants from up on this little plateau. Because there is not that many trees, but there's plenty of shrubs. And if we press K, we're going to look at this. What is this? Oh, it's a high wood sapling. There are plenty of trees actually growing out here. So within a couple of years, we might actually have replenished the forest. More migrants have arrived. That's actually not a great thing right now. We're struggling as it is. So we are killing a few saplings by making the, uh, the moat, but that's A-OK -okay for now. How's our big uh, area mine going? It's nearly done. That means the miners are going to move on pretty quickly to the moat upstairs, and then we, after that, we can expand our our residential floor. But we need blocks, so we're going to add blocks on repeat to both of our masons. There we are. Times like this, you wish you had a brigade of miners. With miners, the work either is non-stop and you wish you had 10,000, or you're looking at the three miners in your fort regretting that you got an extra one. Nearly done there. I don't know where the third guy is. Might still be up on the surface. Someone's left that one... That is designated. Yeah, it's designated to be done, but someone's left that one stone over there unmined. That is... We're going to not look at that. But it does mean our super cool quick miners are now on the surface, and they're just... You can see now the difference between them. It is not insubstantial. So once they've dug all of this out, we're going to add a, a second and then a third layer. Let's go have a look at our blacksmith. How is he doing? Looks like he's done. So these guys should all have their weapons now. Let's take a look-see. Hammer Dwarf. So inventory, we have coatings of this guy's sweat. A lot of it. A decent silver war hammer. This guy's sweating as well. These guys might be sparring, actually. Yep, silver maces. That guy, Rith, got the copper spear, so apparently silver does make better than copper for spears. 
And we see here, oh, the ranger is hunting. The flying bismuth bronze bolt strikes the muskox. That's really cool. So that means we have someone who is capable of hunting. That means he has one of the quivers. What we're going to do is actually go to our craft dwarf here. And we're going to add... We're going to go into the profile, actually. We're going to go into Q. We're going to go to Bone. And we're going to go to Bolts. And we're going to set that to Perpetual. So whenever there's Bone, we want it turned into Bolts. So whenever that guy kills something, he should replenish his own stockpile of ammo. Now, Bone Bolts are not good. They're actually real, real bad. But <coughs> we simply can't afford the charcoal to make him silver ones and we can't make them out of lead looks like our uh, moat is nearly done with level one someone has chosen a really bizarre mining pattern there i'm honestly not okay with that 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 makes me itch okay so we're gonna go oh, we've still got this bit over here someone is being interrupted by a honey badger it's not fighting him, is it? Oh, it is. Okay, so, new plan. Squad A, kill from list. And we are going to look for that honey badger. I don't see it. Did someone kill the honey badger? Yes. Okay, so the peasant was fighting a honey badger, and it looks like he either killed it, or it just... Got bored and wandered off. Because it's not on the map anymore. And then we're, we're almost done with this other side, but we are done with this one. So we're going to go into the channel mode again. We're going to all, all of this channeled another layer down. We are going to have to leave at least a little bit of a ramp for these guys to climb up on one side. So the, the moat is going to have one or two weak points, at least until I can uh, build some stairs in it. like people are uh, getting on with their jobs pretty well though and if we if we do this correctly oh no we should end up with quite a cool defensive structure around the fort because it will flow out from different points of the river and we'll be encircled by this river that also goes through the fort. Animals are growing up to be stray donkeys. We did get a yak back, which is nice. Or at least we will have once it grows up. But I think if we go into our animals here, we don't need everything that we have, so... Stray donkey. What is this donkey fowl? Uh, they're both males, so what we're going to do, we're going to order these butchered. We're going to get rid of the llama, too. I'm going to get rid of that donkey as well. So we just have a bunch of male donkeys. Uh, we have a cow calf. I don't think we want that. Well, that, that will just get those out of the uh, the pasture so that the yaks have plenty to eat. Because they will actually eat the grass in the pasture. And as you can see, a lot of this isn't grass. It's just sand. So we do have to limit the amount of surface creatures we have. There are solutions to that. One of which would be um, to find a cavern underground. Because there are subterranean plants on Dwarf Fortress that don't need any kind of uh, sunlight to live. 
and you can graze on those. It's mostly mosses and funguses, but if we can find a cavern, we can move our pen and pastures down there. I do hope to cover those in this tutorial series, but I don't know for 100% that there is a cavern on this map. What's the other miner doing? Store items in stockpiles. Guess that's all of the food that we just acquired from all of this butchery that's going on. We are also tanning the hides, and this will also mean that the craftsmen will have bones to make bone bolts, so that the... Well, that's just... So, essentially, the hunter got halfway through hunting this thing, walked away, and then it's just on the floor vomiting a lot for basically a page and a half. Asmil is a bit of a douche. I think, uh, I think we can establish Asmil is a douche. We need more bins and barrels, so we're going to go into our workshop here for the carpenter. Shift P, we're going to go Q. And we're going to get bin, we'll order another 25 of those, and we're going to press Q, we're going to go for barrel, we're going to order another 25 of those. That's another 50 logs gone, which I'm not even sure we have 50 logs at this point. People are becoming spear dwarves, that's cool for a reason. If you look at this guy here, we'll zoom in, he has a different sprite now with a spear on it, which is just cool as heck. Now, the militia commander will always look like that, and militia captains also have unique sprites, but the general foot soldiers will get sprites based off of their skills, same as the other civilian professions. Dangerous terrain, that's fine. Just means people are now going to start to struggle to make their way across the moat. We are going to put a drawbridge across it once we have the, the stone to do so. In fact, we may do that now. Here we are. We'll, we'll build. We're going to come down here to draw to bridge when we can find it. We're going to stretch this far wide. It'll go there. And then something to pay attention to, on just on the right side of the screen here, we see raised direction. If you leave this unchecked, if you do nothing with this, your bridge will simply retract into itself, almost like there's an underground housing for it to be in. We want our bridge to raise hmm. Yeah, see there on the top it now says raise direction is up. If we were to press A, it would just retract into itself. We would we want it to raise up from where it is, because that's where our wall's gonna be. Now we could make this out of lead if we wanted to be real cool, but we're not that cool. We have 38 diorite blocks, that's going to be enough to make the uh, the bridge. Now that takes, that actually takes skill. Unlike the walls, bridges require architecture. We did turn that on a bunch of our dwarves early on, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue to get that done. I wonder if our, uh, oh, hunter is fighting. What's he fighting now? Fighting now. Flying yak bone bolt strikes the one hump camel. So he went back to that uh, camel. And he's just firing yak bone bolts at it. Let's, let's see if we can find this poor one hump camel. Is it... Which one is it? Maybe he's killed it by now. But... Oh, nope. It's that one there, I think. The one with the blue flashing. That's not doing too well. So if we press V... Look at this camel. We can press W for wounds. So that one's not wounded. This one is. This is the... Oh, wow. He is not done a brilliant job against that camel. <laughs> There's a lot of wasted uh, ammunition in those wounds. Looks like a bunch of bone. They're actually being brought up there. Oh well, I'm not too concerned about that. The guy will come up and use them on its muskox skin. 
So people will come up and use those as and when they need, but if we were to leave those underground, they would start to really smell and annoy our dwarves. Looks like the fishers are coming back with more and more food as well, which is nice to see. As they skill up, they'll uh, bring us more food back. Now then, in preparation for the drawbridge, we are going to order another batch of mechanisms made. So, a and T, just a bunch of a and T. And they will just use any old rock you can find to do that. The rocks are all the way down here. So we are going to have to look at getting a stone stockpile built. As soon as we can. Oh, we have our first maze dwarf as well. So we'll, we'll zoom right in so you can have a look at the uh, the sprites on these guys. The maze dwarf just there under the militia cap. And that's what this green spiral is. is there's more than one thing on one tile. We have two spear dwarves it looks like. And a maze dwarf. Miners are probably busy uh, grabbing wood, I imagine. Nope, sleep and dig channel. I think he's just... That might be the slow guy who's kind of new. So he's cancelled his hunting because he has no ammunition. But that just means that he's ran out of ammunition with him, not that there's none left. He'll go back and get more when he can. And I think we... Uh, with the production of bone bolts should actually have a few but we can check we can press see we can go across to stocks and ammunition no we have six bismuth bronze bolts in the entire map and they were forbidden so all i've done there is hovered over them and press f once you fired ammunition it becomes forbidden the reason for that is if you don't forbid it and you don't lock your dwarves away in the middle of like a siege or a combat or even the hunting if someone's hunting a dangerous animal and then ted the peasant pings on his uh, loot radar that there is a handy dandy bismuth bronze bolt out there he would just run through a forest full of bears and undead nightmares to try and grab that single bone bolt so you do have to be at least a little bit uh, careful mostly in fact entirely because dwarves are morons what we're gonna do we're gonna build a downstair here you know, yes, we're going to build these out of lead. We're going to build an up downstairs, one below it. Or at least we would, but there's a ramp in the way. So you know what, we're actually just not going to bother with that stairwell. As long as there's a way up and down, it should be fine. And you know, I think... I think two is going to be deep enough for now for the moat. So what we're going to do is... Go back to the top, and we are going to order channeled out that set there. We're going to basically going to channel out everything that's not directly connected to the river. Or we'll get the uh, the interior ones first, anyway. We're not going to channel off this middle bit, so there's still a passageway right up until we um, finish the bridge which what does this need right now it needs masonry I think what we're gonna do we're gonna uh oh oh that's not good well it looks like one of our miners is just about to drown because he did he make it out no oh that's our noble too oh not good so what we're gonna do build we're going to go to C, we're going to go to uh, up downstairs. I right, know we just need a downstairs. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to make it out of schist blocks. Now someone should come up and do that pretty much straight away. And hopefully he is going to get pushed far enough back that he's going to... Uh, use that stairwell when he gets there. Oh jeez, this is not good. Oh, that guy managed to swim his way out. Look at that guy go. Looks like our noble, on the other hand, is just uh, getting his butt kicked. Doesn't mean it upstairs. Oh, wait, no. 
build Big C upstairs. Build that out of schist blocks too. Now, hopefully that means our... Uh, so much to get to that, hopefully before our miner gets drowned. Because he is getting pushed back. He's trying to swim his way out, but he can't. He's not as good a swimmer as the other guy. But he's not actually in water deep enough to drown him just yet. So as long as somebody gets to that with that block, and we have plenty of idlers who can be doing it. Here comes one of the miners. Come on, dude. You should be able to find your way out now. Is that all your teeth? White sand down with slope, just open space. No, it's straight donkey college, okay, but. Doesn't get upstairs. <laughs> oh. Build upstairs. Okay, designate Z. This is... Actually, no. I know what we can do. Designate. Up downstairs. We'll just dig it into the side of the mountain. Oh, no. Never mind. He's drowned. Oh, has he drowned? Was that even him? That wasn't him. But he's now going to dig his way out. Oh, but he needs someone else to dig the one out above him. Because someone else... Oh. People are drowning. This is this has not gone well. Oh wow, a lot of people have drowned. So you know how this is a tutorial series, folks? <laughs> Just don't do what I've done. I'm not sure why people have decided to try and run this way. What their plan was. They're just running... They're still running through. What on earth are they doing? So this is one of those moments where Dwarf Fortress logic defies actual logic. There's a nice safe path down here, but people are running through the waterfall to their death instead. Um, I'm not sure what to tell you folks. This is my first time building a moat. Did not expect this to happen. They're just, they're continually going. I don't understand what's happening. Our cats are in the river. I assume they're trying to make it to the stockpiles, but... Yeah, it looks like the noble died. He tried to swim back across. Oh, boy. Well, this is just one of those things, folks, where... We're going to have to deal with it. It's happened. And I think what I'm going to do is in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to recover from a mass death like this. I'll see you then.